Smith, uh, he was trying to get us to tell you. He was trying to get us to show. It's showing live. Let's see if it, that's going to see if it's showing now. See, can you see if it's showing now? Oh, all right, bye. What'd I'll she say? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for being with us here on today at Elm Grove Missionary Baptist Church uh, on this great day. We thank you for joining us on Wednesday in the Word. This is Pastor Patterson from Elm Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you for sharing with us in this time, this season. We thank God for what he's yet doing in the kingdom of God. A lot going on in the world, in this world. A lot of strange things happening, but we know one thing. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we actually know who holds tomorrow, don't we? We know that tomorrow is all in his hands, and even today, and even our future is yet in God's hands. So we thank God for today, for what he's yet doing, even in time when we don't understand the things we go through. So we want to always want to make sure that the word always gets out. That's why we will always be here on Wednesday in the word, uh, and a new era for us in this time, this strange pandemic time, but we know God is, is with us, and we thank him for being with us. Thank you for joining us here on tonight. Thank you for being with us in this Wednesday in the Word, this, this experience, this new experience for us as we've been doing and, and promoting and sharing with in God's Word. But we want to begin tonight and ask you to grab your family. Listen, you'll always be able to know on Wednesday night that the Word will be meeting in the Word. The Word will continue to get out. It's always important that the Word gets out. It's always about God's people, His Word, and him. It's always about those three things together. God is always concerned about his people having his word. So we will continue to share the word with you as long as we have breath in our body. We'll continue to make sure the word gets out to God's people for this season. So grab your family and grab your children. Thanks for joining us here tonight, 7 o'clock every Wednesday. Uh, we'll be here. And then also, too, on, on Sunday morning, we will, we will be with you. We will be with you. Uh, um, we will be with you. Good evening. Good evening out there. Good evening to everybody out there in, in, um, in streaming land, in virtual land. We thank God that our God is a God. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's om omniscient. He's, a, he, he's everywhere at the same time. He, he's omnipotent. He's, he's all-knowing. He, he knows everything. He knows the ending before the beginning. And we thank God for that and that you're yet with us on tonight. We want to begin with, a, with a, reading our scripture. We've been starting studying in Psalm 51, and we stopped last week because the word had gotten so good. We stopped in Psalm 51 on last week, uh, this psalm written by David. We talked about David had written this psalm uh, after he was trying to, to make, fix his relationship with God. Uh, isn't it good to know that God allows us to fix our relationship with him? He's always a forgiving God. He forgives us of, of our shortcomings. He forgives us of our sins of omission and commission. And guess what? We can never hide nothing from God. He knows all about it. Our job is to make sure that we are in right standing with him. But you know what? Because we don't know when we have to go home to be with him. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's wife, Coretta Scott King, said Dr. King lived his life as if he was going to meet the Lord the next day, the very next minute. So we thank God that we want to always be making sure that it's about not about religion. It's about relationship. It's about our relationship with God. I want to ask you today, how is your relationship with God? And what happens is sin separates us from God. Did you know that? Oh, my God. Sin separates us from God. But I'm thanks be to God that he sent his only begotten son to help what? To fix that relationship issue with us. He came to be the bridge for us, didn't he? He came to be the bridge between us and the Father, that we would never be separated, never again. We thank God for that, for that time. So we want to start tonight in Psalm 51. And um, uh, written by this, uh, David um, regarding the time that Nathan had came to him, the prophet uh, Nathan had came to him and talked to him about the sin he had committed with Bathsheba. A lot of times preachers don't like to talk about sin or talk about repenting. But guess what? We have to deal with sin for what it is. Sin separates us from God. That's why God hates sin. Now, he don't hate the sinner, but he hates the sin. It's the sin he does not like. So we want to encourage you tonight that you're always, always in the word, always studying God's word. So tonight, as we read Psalm uh, 51, it says, verse 1 says, the New Living Translation says, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Verse 2 says, David says, Wash me clean from my guilt. 
purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion, verse 3 says, it haunts me day and night. It says, against you and you alone have I sinned, David says in verse 4. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment uh, judgment, uh, uh, and your judgment against me is just. David is writing this psalm, trying to fix his relationship with God. David had constantly lived his life trying to make sure that his life was always reflecting God. I want to ask you today, is your life reflecting God? Is your, the way you live? Not as they live perfectly, but do we have to do our best to make sure we're living the best we can to make sure we're what? Pleasing our God, our Lord and our Savior. Not living perfectly, but not, not, in, not living sin-free because we're going to say, when we die daily in sin, Paul says I die daily in sin, but we have to be about making sure we're fixing that sin issue, that sin relationship issue we have when we, that separates us from God. Because I don't want to ever be separated from God. I don't know about you. I don't ever want to not feel the presence, oh my God, feel the presence of God never with me. I don't ever want him to leave me, never, never, never leave me alone. I want him to always be by my side. But David writes this psalm and he, he begins with his word. He talks about the Old Testament. Had, we talked about last week on these two Hebrew words that are help to understand repentance. And the first is where it is nakum, which means to, to, to turn away, to change our mind, how we think. That's what, that's what repentance is, is that we're now changing how we look at a particular issue. We never love, we never want to get to the point of where we enjoy sin. Amen. When we get joy so much that we get caught up in it, we get caught up in it and, 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 and enjoy it and forget that we have to think, worry about our relationship. With God, not about religion, not about what the pastor thinks, not 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 about what the church thinks. What does God think about my relationship? I've always said when we fix our our earthly relationship, our heaven and earth relationship with God, then it helps us fix our vertical, our horizontal relationship with man. It helps us to be about making sure that we're using that we're working on our relationship with Him. Here in this psalm, the, the, the second word that means sub is, is used over 600 times in the Old Testament according to the study in this word in Psalm 51. It's translated as turn, return, seek, uh, and to restore. When, what, what Jesus does, he restores us back what into right relationship with God. And we thank God that he does that for us because he came to what? To be a perpetuation. He came to switch with us. Oh, my God. He came to switch places with us that we might, that God, we may, that we have maybe in right relationship with the Father. In the New Testament, there's one word that, that we need to know. The Greek word says metanoia, which literally means to change the mind. Repentance fundamentally means to change uh, your mind about something. Change your mind about how, how you think about sin. What do you think about how you approach it? And that's what David was talking about when he decided he realized that he had done something that separated him from the Father. So he was, up, he was up, so upset about it, he penned this psalm. He penned this psalm, Psalm 51. But tonight as we begin to pray, we want to lift up a, a few names tonight. Those who are getting ready, one of them especially tonight, Brother Jerome Deed, um, who recently had back surgery. We want to ask God to continue to heal his body. I want to pray for Sister Juwan, uh, Brother Jerome Deed, and Sister Juwan Sneed is getting ready for a procedure to be done. We want to pray for her during this season. We want to pray for the others on our sick and shut in list and, and uh, 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 those who are yet going through Mother, mother, mother Goins and Mother Sanders who are yet been under weather. Sister Bray and Sister Ware want to always lift up those saints who have been served for years. And I'm glad the word says in Hebrew that God is not unrighteous to forget our service. But we want to make sure that God, we are yet thinking about our relationship with God. So we take time in prayer. I used to always love prayer time on Wednesday nights when I was growing up in Lubbock, Texas. My great grandmother used to always go down on their knees. I may not be but one or two of them together, but they'd be on their knees praying to the Lord. They'd be going before the Father. On there be petitioning God. But the word says, well, two or three are gathering your name. Maybe two of them. My grandmother, she was a, my great grandmother, she was a deaconess in the church. She was another deaconess in the church. They would always be on their knees praying and sharing and uh, with other trustees and the men of the church, uh, making sure that they were making sure they were in right relationship with the God, with the Father. So we lift up Sister Bray. We lift up Sister Goins. We lift, we, we lift up uh, Sister uh, Pauletta Bray, Sister Ware, and those others who are yet going through. We want to pray for the Hyman family during this season and the Weather family as a transition for celebrating the life of a loved one and who's transitioned from life 
to eternity. So we want to lift them up even on tonight. I want to pray for the sister, Kanisha Bryan, who's yet down on the board working and working hard and prepare for little King and Queen Walker, who will yet soon be joining her during this season, that they will yet be protected. And we want to pray for those who are yet going through in this COVID season. We want to continue to pray for Brother Benjamin and Brother, uh, 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 Brother C, who are yet still recovering and yet being who God has called her to be. We want to pray for our college students and our high school students, those who have returned to school, those who have returned back to school, Pray for our public school students who are yet having to deal with this pandemic and learn and, and be productive. What? In this season. We want to pray for them during this time. So as we bow our heads today, I want to pray for also too, want to lift up the Middleton family. Uh, so celebrating the, the life of a, a loved one who has transitioned here recently. I want to lift up this particular time during this time that we were showing. I want to pray for Reverend Mitchell, a uh, good, good friend, Pat, uh, Minister Reverend Mitchell who has been a great fan of the Elm Grove Church. So as we bow our heads to pray, let us pray together. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this time. We thank you for a time in your word. We thank you, God, that you take your time to bend your ear to the earth just to hear us, just to see about us. God, thank you for being, for being, for being protector, for being the lift of our head, God, that even in, in this pandemic, when we sometimes get down, God, you're the lifter of our head. You lift our head up. God, thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Now forgive us of our sins, God, as we, for there are many, our sins of omission and commission, God, that we've committed, oh God, against you and your divine majesty. We thank you, Lord, that you will be with us, that you will stand by our side, and God, that you will ever, God, be glorified, oh God, each and every day. God, we thank you, Lord, and we love you for who you've been. We pray for our school students, oh God, who are yet going through, God, yet dealing with issues, oh God, yet, yet, yet having to deal and study and learn in this pandemic. We thank you, God that you are yet standing by their side, that you're yet in school. We pray for administrators. We pray for teachers, oh God. God, that you would have your way. God, we pray, oh God, that you would intercede, oh God, for our college students and, and high school students, God, in this season. We pray for families who are yet going through, oh God, spiritually, financially. God, meet the needs, oh God, of those who are yet. God, you said what we ask in Jesus' name that you would do. So we come asking, God, that you would yet intercede for families. Heal the sick, oh God. Set the captives. Redeem the time, oh God, that the canker worm tried to steal away from, that the enemy tried to steal. God, help us, oh God, to be in relationship with you. God, we love you today. We honor we honor you today, God, for who you've been in our life. God, you've been better for us than we've been to ourselves. God, we, you love us, oh God. We know that you do because you're always there, God, standing by us. So we lift you up today, oh God, and bless your holy name. Now, be in this word tonight, oh God with you, oh God, in this season. Your word for your people, God, because it's all about your relationship with your people. In Jesus' name, God, we call it done, oh God. Your word says that the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, and God, that you shall raise him. God, we need you right now. We pray for Brother Jerome Deeds, oh God, special prayer, oh God, even right now, God, sales, tissues, and vessels. Line up by the authority of Jesus the Christ, oh God. We know that you can do it, oh God. We only ask that you will. God, we need you, God. We seek you, God. We seek your face, oh God, right now. We don't seek a doctor, God. We seek your hand, oh God, your hand that heals, oh God. God, we know you're too perfect to make a mistake, oh God. But God, you said that we call upon your name. David says, I, I was young, but now I'm old, God. But never seen the God, we know that you don't forsake us. We know that you hear us, oh God. We know that you stand by our side. So stand with us, oh God. Give us strength in us, oh God. Meet the need for the sick and the shut in, oh God. We ask that you be with those, oh God, who are yet going through. We even pray for Sister Pew, Pew God. Remember, great member of Bethlehem Baptist Church, oh God. We lift her up, God, in Jesus' name, God, that you would move in a mighty way. In a mighty way, God, we ask, oh God, that you would stand by us on a family side, oh God, continue to do the great work that you are yet doing. God, and we'll be careful to give you the glory, give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. You can hear okay? Amen. Amen. That's what we, when we're turning, we move it. If we have a little technical problem, we will fix it. Amen. Amen. Not sure if that will. Amen. Does that help the effort? Amen. Give us a sign if you can. If um, give us a sign, give us a signal, give us a uh, amen to let us know we're trying to work this thing out. We're trying to get through this. This is a new thing. Say amen. Give us a second to work. To say to the Lord, rebuke you. We, we God, we just believe you will yet do. Amen. Amen. Lift it up, sister. That's it. That's it. We lift it up. Is it? Is that better? Just go. 
Amen. Amen. Please email us. Amen. Let us know you can see us. Let us know. Let us know you can see us. Is that any better? Are you sure? All right. All right. We're going right to the word. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with us as we try to work through this whole technology piece. Thank you on today. Amen. When you're trying to get it all done, get God's word out. Sometimes Satan always got trying to disturb it, trying to. So we want to be encouraged in the Lord. We want to yet know. We want to yet know that God is yet with us. That he's yet by our side. He's always got a ram in the bush. But here in this in this text in Psalm 51, we've been, we've been dealing with Psalm 51. And David, we talked about how David wrote this psalm right after he had basically uh, had committed sin with Bathsheba. I always call this the bed, bath, and beyond story. Why? Because it's when actually that, that he actually, uh, actually, he was, uh, actually committed sin against God. But David realized that we have to realize in our life that when we commit sin, we want to make sure that we are make sure we are fixing that relationship with God. Make sure we're always thinking about, Lord, how do I please you? Not how do I please man? How do I please uh, uh, the, the past? How do I please another brother in the next field? No, God, what do you think about my service unto you? What do you think about how I'm loving you, how I'm, I'm treating you, how I'm loving my brother and my sister? I want to encourage you on today that God has a plan for your life, and we just have to make sure that we're walking in that plan. David realized he utterly sinned, uh, and by his sin, he in this, after he realized that, he pours out Psalm 51 and torment and what repentance unto God. To what? To tell God, God, forgive me, O God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. Forgive me, O God. For, for, forgive me, O Lord. For what for what I've done, we we must make sure we come to the throne of uh, 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 with throne of grace with repentance with, with repenting. What what the word says? What did the Lord require? The Lord likes a contrite spirit, a broken spirit, and a contrite heart. God likes for us to have that have that in, 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 when we're trying to fix our relationship with Him. David writes this psalm and after after Samuel after 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 Nathan rebukes him in Second Samuel eleven and twelve. He tells him a story about a man who had who who had who, who had taken the the ewe lamb of a poor man, the only lamb he had, and he killed it to give to a stranger. But yet still, David had David he tells David, but the rich man had many flocks and, and and herds to be able to to share. But he reminded him. He said, but he said David said he asked David. Nathan, Nathan said, well, what what do you think should be done to the man who he said the man should pay double. The man man should pay extra for what he. Nathan pauses for a minute and tells David, he said, you know what? You're that man. David, that, 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 you, you are that man that took what was best in one person's heart and you destroyed it. By, by going into the home of Uriah and going to the home of Bathsheba, you had family. Why? You, you committed adultery with a married woman. Then you had the husband killed. You committed murder. He said, David, you, David, you are that man. You are the person that should pay for you are the person that should pay for, for the wrong that was done to a lie. David repents in himself, writes this song, thinking about, Lord, what can I do to get back in relationship? That's what he was doing. He was trying to get back in the right relationship with the Father. See, when we think about the sin we've done wrong, we ought to be thinking about, Lord, how do I fix my relationship back. Have you ever committed sin before and, and you felt bad about it? It, 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 it was a conviction, not a condemnation, because you said there's no more condemnation. But have you ever been so convicted that you, you really want to change your life, really want to change how you talk, how you carry yourself? Have you ever committed sin so that it, it hurts you on the inside? That's how you know you, you, you're you convicting the Holy Spirit. It's affecting how you see God, how God even sees you. Is your relationship so? David had such a relationship. The word says David was a man after God's own heart. It's so convicted, David, he was broken. Have you ever committed sin so that you were your spirit? I want to encourage you tonight, brothers and sisters, that we think about that. Do we think about sin as a thing of enjoyment? Or we think about a way of how it's displeasing to God? Mm, how it stench in the nostrils of God, how God is not pleased. I want to encourage you even on tonight that we have to learn to, to face, face, uh, face the person in the mirror. You know who we're going to give account to? The man in the mirror. 
Uh, the guy had a song once talking about the man in the mirror, but that's something totally different. But I'm talking about in sin. We have to face the mirror. The law is a mirror. It's a, it's a school. And we have to look at ourselves in the mirror of the word. What does the word say about how we're living? David says, David said, David, David, David says we concentrate and focus on verse number two tonight. David says, Watch me for guilt. Purify me from my sin. David says, Wash me from my guilt and the stain of sin and, and, and with thy mercy and grace. Wow. Have you ever thought about that sin leaves a stain? That's what that song talks about. Uh, sin has left a crimson stain. That's why we are plunged in the blood of the lamb to what to be washed. What other way can you be washed in crimson red and you come out white at the toe? No other way. There's, there's no other way but the blood of Jesus. Nothing Jesus that cleanses us. Sin leaves a stain on us. But guess what? Jesus said, I came that you may have life and to clean you and, and, and to purge you. They, they, David says, clean me up, O God. Not as a ceremonial cleaning, but clean me from my unrighteousness, from my sin. And David even says in that verse, some, some translations talk about them. I mean, some, 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 some theologians say that David is saying multiple uh, to wash me. Don't just wash me one, wash, wash me multiple times. For this stain that I have of sin inside is deep. I've left a saying, and it's, it's so, this soaking guilt that I have on the inside is hurting me. He says, he says, God, pardon me from sin. He says, we ought to be about asking God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our thought, word, and deed. You know, that's how you, it's not about all the time going to a store, taking something you're not going to be taking. Sometimes the thought we have, you know, I always call it our stinking thinking. Everybody say stinking thinking. Come on, tweet that in. Stink, stinking thinking, what? Can be sin. You know, that's how sin already starts. It starts with a thought. You know, when David went to the top, the rooftop of his, of his palace, and he looked out over the way, and he saw Bathsheba bathing there. Guess what? It all started with a thought. Have you ever thought about it that way? That sin starts with a thought? What well, we have to make sure that they don't get in our mind, but then if they do get in our mind, we don't act on them. <laughs> well, that's why we have to say, by the word says, let this mind be in you, that what? That was in Christ Jesus. Let it be within you. Let it be on the inside of you. We have to make sure that we're being about getting God's word, that he may, it may cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The New Living Translation version is where it says, he says, clean me of my gift, purify me. King James Version says, wash me thoroughly from mine. Not nobody else's. See, a lot of times, sometimes we get caught up in everybody else's sin. Isn't it easy to see everybody else's faults? The word says we we looking at the little bitty the little bitty little bitty uh, uh, big old uh, 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 little bitty speck in other people's eye, and we got a big old what mo board in our own eye. We we can easily point out everybody else's sin, can't we? We can easily find fault with somebody else. Old saying says that you, you know you know you can you can think what you want to think because only you have to live with your thoughts. But sometimes our thoughts are not pure; they're not proper. But David says, this thought that I had caused me to, to commit sin. We, we, we have to learn to face sin and what? See sin as God sees. Oh my God, that's a word for the night. We ought to be about seeing sin the way God sees sin. I want to ask you that tonight. Do you see it that way or do you see it another way? David wanted to see sin the way God saw sin. That's why in this verse number two, he says, Lord, wash me. Clean from my guilt. David asked God to wash him through and through from every instance of where he had departed from departed from the straight line of, of following God. David asked for that. See, sometimes we have to do that. We don't need anybody else to tell us to do it. We have to be about, okay, look at the man in the mirror. Lord, help me to live better. Help me to think better. Help me to love better. Help me to get. David says that. that Straight line. Now, notice that this straight line is that, that David is talking about. He has got to wash him to put it back. He, it's not a perfect line. Why? Because we can never be perfect. The one who ever walked the earth is ever perfect. But I thank God he allows us to fix that relationship by repenting, by turning back. I was saying on, on last Wednesday that repenting is what? Turning and going the other direction. 
Not continuing down the wrong path, but trying to continue down the right path. David says, it cleansed me from my frightful ways in which I have missed the mark of God. You know that's what sin is? Sin is missing the mark. Plain and simple. I don't know if you've ever been, 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 been using a uh, bow and arrow and you're out there trying to shoot at the target and, and you pull back the string on the, on the bow and, and pull back the arrow. You shot the arrow and you missed the whole target. That's called missing the mark. That's what sin does. Sin is us, everybody, Pastor Patterson, everybody on earth, missing the mark. It's so amazing how how sorry we can we 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 can become uh, uh, when we have done wrong. Have you ever done wrong when you just feel so sorry? Some people just some people some people just break down and cry so for the sorry that they have done. But immediately after they've done that, they guess what? They get real strong until the next time. We have to constantly be thinking about Lord, how do I live my life pleasing you, pleasing in your sight. Sin, uh, sin causes us to miss the market. And while the word says, I know we must all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That's what we have to ask for God. God, give me your mercy. David says, Lord, have mercy on me in verse number one. Have mercy on me because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out this stain of sin, he tells me in verse number one. He tells him, wipe it away. We have to understand that this stain of sin is deep. That's why the word tells us that he's coming back for, for, for a church that's spotless. A, a church, a, a church that's spotless, a church that's ready to be taken home. That's why Jesus came to what? Die just for our sins. Did y'all know that? He came to die for First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of some, no, all unrighteousness. Not just some, all unrighteousness. He is faithful and to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That's why we got to make sure that we're being about asking God, Lord, forgive me of my sin like David. Clean me, wash me, purge me of my evil thoughts, my evil ways, my, 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 my stumbling tongue. Help me, oh God, to be pleasing in your sight. David asked him, God, God cleanse me of this. That's, 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 that's blotted me out, that's made me God dirty in your eyesight. Have you ever thought that when you commit sin, you're actually committing the dirt in front of God? Because since God is all knowing, He's everywhere at the same time. I remind people sometimes, that I remind people all the time, when we commit sin, we're committing it right in front of God. We're committing the sin in front of our Father, the perfect one, our Heavenly Father. We have to make sure we're being about making sure our life is not perfect. But attempting what? To at least try to make, try to hit the mark. Try to hit the mark. But if we miss the mark, the thing that we have like David is showing us on today is the ability to repent. Lord, I repent. I, I changed my thought. I changed the way I thought about this sin. I don't want to enjoy this sin. I want it to be, the, I, I, want, I, want to, I don't want to see sin like you see sin. And that's what David did. That he David says he had willfully rebelled against God, and and and, and, and he wanted to, to atone for the sin that he had now committed against his father. He says, "Lord, forgive me of my sins. Have have mercy upon me. Cleanse me, O Lord. I want to confess my sin to you, God. I want you to blot it out. I want you to make me God, clean me up for my transgressions." A lot of times we get caught up in sin and trying. And when we commit sin, we're all going to fall short. But I'm glad God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our unrighteousness. And then David turns to verse number, number three. And David says in verse number three of Psalm 51, he says, For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. He says in verse four, Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. At least David recognized his rebellion. I remember when mom, mom, when mom would grow up, uh, they would always tell us that well, don't be so rebellious. Rebellious means when you go against what you've been taught. You go against what the Lord, Lord mom and dad have taught you. David recognized 
in Psalm 51 and 3. He says, my rebellion. Do you recognize your rebellion? Do you recognize when you rebel against God? Mm. The, the, and I get verse 3. Does it haunt you day and night? Ooh. Does it bother you? It bothered David so much. And you know, David never committed this sin ever again with Bathsheba and the murder he committed. He never committed. It bothered him so much. Does sin bother you that way? Or do we get caught up in enjoying our sin? Mm. We get lost in forgetting about our relationship. David says, Lord, against you, he says in verse four, and you alone have a sin. A lot of times we think that we're sinning against man. David says, we are sinning against God. We are sinning against the Holy One, our Father, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He that sits high and looks low, he that sits on the throne. Who that one, he that one day that will judge. We have committed the sin against him. That's why I always remind people, as kingdom citizens, it's about your relationship with God. How is your relationship? Not about religion. Relationship. You know when we get to heaven, it's not going to be Baptist over here and, and, and Presbyterian over here and, and, and Church God Christ over here. It's going to be believers. The word says in Revelations that these are they that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want to ask you tonight, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you asked God to forgive you of your sin? Have you asked God to purge you with hyssop? And you shall be clean. Wash you and you shall be whiter than Have you asked God prayer? Lord, clean me up. Make me new again. Make me a new creature in you. I want to ask you that on tonight. Have you done that? Have you prayed that prayer? David prays this prayer in verse 3 and 4. He said, Lord, I recognize. And New King James Version says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. See, our sin we commit. We can never hide our sin. Why? Because God sees all of our sin, all of our faults. He sees it. David says, Oh my God, I publicly acknowledge, for I have broken your law. My sin was public, and now David says my repentance is public too. Used to be in some churches, be they would bring people down front, have people to confess all their sins out in public. And, and my thing was, how can I, how, how can I be be about trying to judge somebody else for what they? Did? I can't. I can't hold that against somebody else, God, because I got stuff going on in my life. I, I, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Trying to be. I'm not what I totally ought to be, but I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Huh? Can you say that on tonight? Can you, can, 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 can you say, can you say, Lord, I, I'm glad I'm, uh, you changed my life. You changed my mind. That's why the word says, be ye transformed by the renewing, what, of your mind. That means you think about things differently. You, you, you don't see it the same way. You turn and go another way. If you see in the sin the same way you did, see, people don't like to talk about sin. People want to talk about money, 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 how we going to give it, how, where, where, where the money going to come, when the Cadillac, have you ever seen the Cadillac drop out there? A million dollars? No, don't have it like that. <laughs> we have to see it. Why? Because Jesus, let me tell you, in this, Jesus is on his way back. Hallelujah. He's on his way back. I promise you. He's on his way back. He's on his way back. For a church that's spotted, trying to live right. Are you in that number today? Can you say, the Lord, I want, I want to be different. I want to live different. I want to, I, 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 want to, I want to love different. I want to give different. God, I want to give you my hope without holding anything back. I'm tired of living this sinful way. I want to live a new way. Create within me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit in me. Lord, transform my thinking. Let me not see sin the way I used to see sin. David says, Lord, clean, wash me. He cried out to the Lord. Beg, Lord, please forgive me of this sin I've committed. And he, and he, and he reminded, Lord, I committed this against you. 
So I want to ask you today, as we get ready to close, in this Bible study on this week, it may have been a challenging time this week, all the way, but guess what? We're encouraging the Lord. God's word will kick, will get out. Not about solely seeing me, it's about hearing God's word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to encourage you today. Be encouraged in the Lord. Even in this pandemic, you can yet pray to God. You can praise God. You can study God's word. Read Psalm 51. Understand what David was dealing with. David had issues he was dealing with in life. I want to encourage you today. Ask Lord. Lord, come into my heart. If you don't know the Lord today, change me. Don't make me perfect, God. Create within me a new spirit. Wash me. Wash me. For all my sin. Lord, help me to think about you, oh God, every day. How do I live my life? How I treated my brother. How, how I treat that person in the street. <laughs> did I give them the one-sided peace sign? Or did I, or did I say, God bless you and kept on going? When I saw other people's money on the ground, did I, did I try to find who it was? Or did I decide, well, that was a blessing from the Lord? Ask God to create within you a clean heart. Renew you. That's what David was asking. When David was asking God to wash him, he said, Lord, renew me. Renew me. Renew me, God. I don't like the person I became. That's what David's saying. I didn't like it. I want to encourage you today. Continue to be in God's word. Join us on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. service. We'll be online. Amen. may have some challenges, but you stick with us. We are yet going to keep getting the word out. We're going to get this thing right before God come back. <laughs> before Jesus come back, we're going to get it right. I want to encourage you in the word. Read Psalm. 51. Join us again next week as we continue to walk through Psalm 51 in Bible study. And on Sunday mornings, we worship God in spirit and in truth as we lift up God in our life and how he has yet blessed our life. Not because we're perfect creatures, but because we're forgiven of our sins. He's forgiven us of our sins. Uh, listen, if you're feeling condemned, don't feel condemned. You're forgiven. If you pray the prayer of salvation and ask God to come into your heart and you ask God to forgive you, the word says he's faithful and just to forgive you. God's word will not return void. It'll go out and do what it's supposed to. If you ask God to forgive you, the word says he is faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Isn't that good news to know? That all you have to do is ask. Not be perfect. Not jump through no hoops, not jump jump over no buildings, not hit boulder light and hit your top of the head. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I want to pray for you tonight as we get ready to close. Uh, Wednesday in the Word, Psalm 51, verses 3 and 4. Lord, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for those who are listening, oh God, who want to work on their relationship with you, the love relationship with you, God. Create within them, oh God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within them, Lord. Be like David, oh God. We, we come before you, God, asking you, first of all, God, that you would have mercy upon us, that you would wash us, oh God, and clean us up, oh God, from all guilt. We recognize the sin we commit against you, God, is against you and against you alone, like David. God, we committed sin against you, not against my brother, my sister, God, against you alone. God, we ask you to forgive us of our sin. As they, as they listen tonight, God, as they are with us, oh God, as we close out tonight, God, forgive them of their sin. The many who don't know you, God, we pray, oh God, that they will come to know you, God, in the pardon of their sins. That they pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Save me from my sins. Help me to be what you've called me to be. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died, that Jesus Christ died, that he rose again, he's coming back again. Come into my heart. Be Lord and Savior of my life. Save me today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're closing out tonight. Thank you so much for being with us on tonight. We love you. Join us again on next Sunday. On this coming Sunday, 11 a.m. service sharp. We're going to start on time. Amen. Whether it's, whether it's two in our virtual uh, uh, Sunday worship service or if it's 10,000, we're going to be there. But you keep watching us. And then next Wednesday on Wednesday in the Word. We look forward to seeing you in the virtual land. 
Keep trusting God. Listen, keep the faith no matter what's going on. Keep praying for one another in this tough time. Pray for your country. Pray, pray for your country. Pray for the sick and the shut in. God is yet in control. Not out of control. It's not out of control. God is yet in control. He's not the author of confusion. He's a God of order. <laughs> you just have to see it. Not with your physical eyes, with your spiritual. God is yet in control. Listen, keep the faith, and we'll see you next Wednesday, 7 o'clock sharp, p.m., and Sunday morning. Amen. 11 a.m. sharp. Amen. In Jesus' name, keep the faith. God bless you.